Hey everyone, before we dive right into the action, I just wanted to let you know that all the opening theory used in this series can be found in my latest Lana system course, will be the first link in the description. And we're getting the white pieces, I'm gonna be unleashing the London system and uh, I'm gonna be using the second move, knight f3, move order, important, and we get to face the Chigorin, bishop f5, delaying knight f6, whenever they delay knight f6, we... Always play with uh, c4. And now expecting a lot of them to do the knight before uh, chip trick, going for the fork. Case of knight f6, um, I think we just play knight c3. And this is still a uh, pretty common position when they are trying out knight before. Just trying to double check if everything is uh, correct. Yeah, I think just go knight c3 now. Still expecting this kind of move. He could play e6 as well. That's more like standard. Or night before we could like at the very least play rook c1, but I think just uh, queen a4 is more effective here. If he's rushing for that and okay against e6, just e3. And now bishop b4 simply rook c1. If knight b4, same rook c1 move. And okay on bishop d6, a common theme that you'll see in the course. Is that we can play the move bishop g5 as a general rule. And with this, we're threatening to take and we're putting a lot of pressure on uh, the d5 square. So now, for instance, I think you can just take on f6 and take twice on d5 and we manage to win a pawn. This is like a pretty typical trick that uh, we have in the course. Okay, still. He's gonna have a bit of compensation maybe, but uh, this is just uh, completely winning. Considering even bishop c4, threatening knight c7, but he can just castle, I think, and this looks pretty risky, so I'll just move the knight back, threatening d5, winning a piece, in case of castle or anything like that. And he has to move the queen once again, or maybe the knight. But yeah, against this, I think it's pretty safe to go for d5 and collect the piece so the pawn was good enough but when we get to win the piece it's even better obviously so now it should be uh, a relatively easy win so let's see opponent for sure will try to fight this on but when we're having the extra material we're just gonna be going for a lot of trades as a rule of thumb that's what we do with knight d4 Hitting both the queen and the bishop. And okay, maybe I can look for some tactical tricks, but just gonna keep it simple. Next step would be to force queens off. I could also develop and gain a tempo with bishop d3. But a move that's kind of appealing to me now, it's something like queen d5. Even though he could perhaps avoid the trade by going queen f6. It's still pretty tempting. Queen f3 could be a move. It's sort of like the same thing. Mm. I think I'll just do bishop d3 and just keep it very natural. Developing, gaining a tempo against the queen. And on queen f6, we can just get ourselves castled. I think that's really the easiest. Could also play queen f3. Idea to offer the queen trade. I actually like that idea even better. Because now against queen g5, let's say we could potentially force queens off. And okay, when they go for the queen trade, when down a piece, it's basically similar to resignation. So they should have tried to, of course, keep queens on the board if black is looking for any, let's say, like practical chances. Even though the position is dead lost, without queens on the board, it's going to be for sure losing. So yeah, okay, bishop f4, not threatening anything. Just gonna be centralizing my rooks. Gonna use this one for the d file and potentially this one for the g file. And could activate bishop next, hitting the pawn. Yeah, it goes g5, hit the pawn, and also attacking this because we are breaking the pin. And uh, yeah, has to move the bishop most likely. Could take that. There's rook b8 maybe. So we don't have to rush with it, but okay. Just finds the resign button and we manage to get this one in. Okay, gonna go for a new one and uh, getting the white pieces. Gonna be trying out our fresh weapons and going for the London system. And okay, I have to say 
this move I have not included in the course. I know this is pretty shameful, but I forgot to add these lines. But I'm gonna be trying to do in this video something that should teach you in general on how to play the London when they don't play Fiori. We're just gonna get our setup, like knight d2, e3, c3, bishop d3 most of the times. And then we'll see. We could expand in the center. It, it depends also a bit on what they do, because they could blunder in the meantime. So this, I think opponent has in mind e5. So with that being said, we could definitely play something like d5 and fix this weak square. I think this is a pretty strong move. But what if we play like the London line? e3, e5? Is it that bad? It's definitely something that he's looking forward to, but I'll just um, I'll just go d5. I'll just try to punish this as hard as we can. Stop e5 and now could it, for instance try something like that, but no need to rush with it just yet. So c4, he could play knight e5 then. Hmm. How do I wanna start this? I think maybe e4, simply. Just uh, controlling the center in case of knight e5, maybe then knight e4, keeping an eye on the e6 square. Okay, he goes to b6. I'm definitely not too afraid of that. I think can simply develop. Idea to get the knight, and this is does not have to do so much with the London system, I know. But that's more or less, I think, what we have to play against this super weird setup where he was threatening this early e5 push. He got it anyways, but we have very nice development. So he goes queen e7, I can definitely take cash in the bishop pair. Do we have better? I think that's like good enough. Uh, yeah, could just play queen d2, but then he gets knight c4 in, which is kind of annoying. And I think we're just gonna be playing it in this fashion. Could just do queen d2 as well, because like queen d4 could be vulnerable to knight c6 coming in. So I think just to d2 should be good enough. And then on like long castle, d5 will still not be a move because we have. More attacks. And uh, okay, let's see what opponent has in mind. We've got a bishop pair. In case of knight c4, I think we can take that. And on g5, we can just reroute it to e3. Like g3 was fine, but I feel like the bishop has more perspective on this diagonal, already threatening bishop takes, followed by knight d5. And on knight c4, I said earlier that we're gonna take. Could also maybe go queen d4. Idea is to go maybe knight e3. Have queen e7 as a motif, but I don't think it just works quite yet. And perhaps just take. And now uh, we could potentially just try to take advantage of this hook by going h4. That would be pretty simple. Do we have anything better? Like. 95 type of move. I'm not sure. 95 feels kind of crashing, to be honest, if you'd ask me. But yeah, I think I'm just gonna go 95. Okay, he still has queen a2, but then like queen c3. Have a feeling that should be devastating. So he could go c6, but. Knight b6 check. Okay, so knight e5 is probably best move. But I want to keep this as simple as I can. So I might play something else. Which could perhaps be the h4 move. Just um, using the hook. This is typically like a pretty healthy thought process. And now this bad boy can lift over the king side. Could also do this move just to be annoying. If I want to hit the bishop. Because he may want to go f5 and open it up. 
I think that's definitely one of his plans that we need to watch out for. So, rook h5, f5. Yeah, I think we start with this. I think this is just super annoying for my opponent. And now, okay, bishop h6 can just collect the free piece. He should have, like, defended it, but we were already much better, so... See, we don't actually need to do that much. No need to go for those like crazy 95 lines that I was calculating initially. Just use the hook, create a weakness, get a promising position, and most of the times you won't have to do all the work because they just blunder. So I managed to get a game. Hey everyone, before I let you go, I wanted to address this problem because a lot of the low rated players are kind of afraid to get these adjustable courses thinking that they are too advanced and there's no way you can actually get to use them in your games. And don't get me wrong, it might be the case with some, but in my latest uh, London course, I have made it in uh, such fashion that it's super beginner friendly. We focus a lot on the noob theory, as you can see in this variation, this is part of the course. We literally had the same position from the first game where the main move is uh, bishop to e7. In our game, opponent played h6, which is also, funnily enough, mentioned here. And we just managed to take the pawn and uh, just start the game with an extra pawn just by simply applying the line from the course. So uh, this is only the book format here that you can see. You can use it basically as a book practice over the board if you're more into that or you can also use the move trainer technology if you're not aware what that is uh, we can go here see in chapter and start practicing the moves and this has been proven to be the uh, best way to study opening theory just makes it super easy to memorize you get to practice against the computer and uh, just makes it so much easier and fun to learn opening theory and here against bishop e7 which is the better move uh, h6 is mentioned as a, as a clickable inside the line here we get to practice the main line and uh, now we just get to use this trick when we take the pawn on d5 followed by queen b3 winning a pawn with a thematic idea so then basically the uh, computer makes you play this line once again and for instance if you go wrong here like cd5 is incorrect now what you'll actually end up seeing after we get to practice this line after we go e3 just gonna put the moves real quick so we take on f6 first we go cd and queen b3 let's say we make another wrong move so we play knight c3 e6 and uh, after the moves uh, e3 bishop d6 bishop g5 let's say instead of taking on f6 we rush with cd and it's gonna pop as incorrect and after we make these mistakes what uh, makes chessable so powerful is that it's basically focusing on these weaker spots when you tend to go wrong and it just makes you repeat this many times as you can see here so now it makes us repeat uh, taking on f6 first as well and you just have to do it many times basically so usually the default setting is to repeat it three times what makes it super nice is that it actually allows you to customize it on your own so maybe you're a person that feels like okay i need to go over this five times or maybe ten times or maybe you're like a fast learner and you could go over it only two times you can easily customize this inside the chessable platform if you're going over the uh, the settings i think you can just use this little thing at the bottom and this way you can easily start memorizing these lines and uh, start crushing these snoops you can see we're playing only against 600 rated opponents but they still go for the same mistakes all over again and uh, you can just start abusing this by uh, getting the course you can get both the book format and the move trainer technology which we have just seen for uh, only less than 30 bucks and later on uh, if you're really enjoying the course and you want to support me you can also upgrade it to uh, the video format and by the way one last thing we still have an introductory sale which allows you if you spend more than a hundred dollars on chessable they will give you a free course about uh, Mikhail Tal's life and games so if you're interested in that check out my course by uh, clicking this little thing that will appear on the screen so, with that being said, I'd like to really thank you for making it uh, this far into the video and I'll see you around on the channel. Take care.